Hello girls, I hope you're staying safe at home. To continue with the nervous system, today we are going to start from the spinal cord. You know the spinal cord extends from the medulla of the brain, goes right down through the entire length of the backbone and it ends at the second lumbar vertebrae and it is protected by the backbone so it lies inside the neural canal of the vertebrae. So when we talk about the internal structure of the spinal cord, you will see that the arrangement of the white and gray matter is opposite to that in the brain. So you know the gray matter in the brain lies on the outside and the white matter inside okay but here it is just the opposite you will see the gray matter on the inside and white matter on the outside you know the gray matter what does it contain it contains the cell bodies there you can see these are the cell bodies which is found on the inside okay uh, and um, these uh, cell bodies of motor and association neurons, they lie on the inter in, inner side. And the white matter, okay, that is the axon, lie on the outside. So the white matter which contains axons runs longitudinally to and from the brain, okay. It goes to the brain, it comes back from the brain and even it crosses from one side. Here you can see from one side to the other side okay and there is a small central canal here you can see the small central canal okay which runs the entire length and is continuous with the cavities of the brain it is also filled with cerebrospinal fluid and you know this cerebrospinal fluid is a shock proof cushion and forms a medium for the exchange of food materials waste products and respiratory gases with the neurons okay so when we look at the spinal cord externally it is covered by the same three membranes of the brain dura mater arachnoid and pia mater in continuation with those of the brain okay so what is the function of the spinal cord the spinal cord has the following functions first it is concerned with reflexes below the neck. It conducts sensory impulses from the skin and muscles to the brain. So from the skin and muscles, it takes sensory impulses to the brain and it also conducts motor responses from the brain to the muscles of the trunks and limbs. Trunks and limbs means the hands and the limbs, okay? So these are the three functions of the spinal cord, which you'll find here. Now next we move on to the peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system also abbreviated as PNS. It includes the nerves which carries impulses to and from the central nervous system. Central nervous system means the brain and the spinal cord. So the peripheral nervous system is divided into somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system okay the somatic nervous system has two sets of nerves that is the cranial nerves coming from the cranium means the brain and the spinal nerves spinal means the spinal cord so it has two sets of nerves okay the cranial nerve as the name tells you it comes from the brain there are 12 pairs of cranial nerves okay so what are the cranial nerves sensory like olfactory for the nose optic for the eyes auditory for the ears okay and motor nerves which carries impulses okay like the one going to the eye muscles and mix nerves, mix means both sensory as well as motor nerves are there, like those going to and coming from the face and tongue. So they are mixed, both sensory as well as motor nerves. Next, the spinal nerves, they come from the spinal cord, as I already told you. There are 31 pairs. You will find eight pairs in the neck region. You'll find 12 pairs in the thorax five pairs in the lumbar region, five pairs in the sacral, and one pair in the coccygeal region. If you remember from the neck, thorax, 
lumbar, sacral and coccygeal region all lie in the backbone. Okay. Now, a typical spinal nerve originates from the spinal cord by means of two roots, a dorsal root and a ventral root. Okay. So, just hold on. Let me show you the dorsal root there. You can see here. Yeah? Okay. The dorsal root and a ventral root. Okay. So, each dorsal root has an ovoid dorsal ganglion. So, here you can see ovoid dorsal ganglion is contained in the dorsal root. Every spinal nerve is a mixed nerve which has both sensory as well as motor fibers. So it has sensory as well as motor fibers, which brings the, you know, um, message from the skin is sensory and which takes the message back to the effector, the muscle or the gland that is the motor. Okay, so at the junction of the two roots, the sensory and motor fibers separate out. So the sensory and the motor, they will separate out at the junction. So they will separate out here. Uh, then both the roots enter the gray matter. You will see that it enters the gray matter. That is the central part here. Both the roots enter the central part of the spinal cord and uh, it ends in the corresponding dorsal and ventral projecting horns of the gray matter. So here you have the projecting horns of the gray matter, the ventral and the dorsal horns of the gray matter. So next we move on to the autonomic nervous system, also abbreviated as ANS. It consists of a pair of chains of nerves and ganglia on either side of the backbone, okay? So this system actually controls the involuntary actions of the internal organ. There are two parts of the autonomic nervous system. One is known as sympathetic and the other one is known as parasympathetic um, autonomic nervous system, okay? So the nerves of sympathetic system, they come from the spinal cord between the neck and the waist region only. So it is between the neck and the waist, okay? But the parasympathetic system is located at two places, one in the head and neck and the other in the sacral region, that is the lower back. The, these two parts are opposite to each other. The sympathetic nervous system is stimulated by the hormone adrenaline, which is secreted by the adrenal glands, which is located in the kidneys, okay? We'll be doing this in detail in the endocrine system. So as you can see, we were discussing the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. So sympathetic prepares the body for action and parasympathetic prepares the body for relaxation, okay? So it is lying on either side of the backbone, okay? You can see this table shows you how the two parts of the autonomic nervous system, that is the sympathetic system and the parasympathetic system, they work in opposition to each other. The sympathetic system accelerates the heartbeat, that is the heart beats faster, but parasympathetic system brings it back to normal. It retards the heartbeat. And all the blood vessels are constricted except the coronary vessels which are dilated so that more blood flows into the heart. Whereas the parasympathetic system brings it back to normal. All the blood vessels are dilated and the coronary vessels are constricted. Sympathetic system dilates the bronchi and bronchioles in the lungs so that more air reaches the lungs for more oxygen, whereas the parasympathetic brings it back to normal by constricting the bronchi and bronchioles. In the intestines, you'll see that peristalsis is decreased, food will pass down more slowly, but the parasympathetic system will bring it back to normal when peristalsis is increased. And the sympathetic system, it 
the urinary bladder it constricts it contracts the spinster muscles so that the muscles are relaxed and you will not feel like urinating but the parasympathetic system it relaxes the spinster muscles and the muscles contract so that you will feel like to urinate and what happens to the pupil of the eye the sympathetic system it dilates the pupil of the eye so that more light goes inside but the parasympathetic sympathetic system brings back the pupil of the eye it constricts it brings it back to normal sympathetic system does not allow the secretion of saliva mouth becomes dry but parasympathetic system again brings it back to normal stimulates the secretion of saliva and sympathetic system stimulates the secretion of tears that is the lacrimal glands and parasympathetic system does not allow the secretion of tears that is brings it back to normal and uh, the sympathetic system it stimulates the contraction of the muscles that are you know um, attached to the hair in your body so that the hair becomes raised as when you are feeling cold when you are scared okay but the parasympathetic system brings it back to normal and body as a whole the sympathetic system prepares the body for action supposing you're very angry you want to fight so your body is all ready for action your heart is beating far fast the more blood is reaching the blood vessels more oxygen is reaching the lungs you breathe faster okay so all your body different parts of your body is ready for action but parasympathetic system it prepares the body for relaxation when this passes over now emotions and autonomic nervous system the autonomic nervous system you can see is strongly influenced by emotions like grief anger fear sexual stimulation etc okay there are certain um, troubles which are associated with continued emotional stress like high blood pressure stomach ulcers and some other troubles may also arise now we talk about reflexes which are involuntary actions involuntary actions means it is not under our control the term reflex actually comes from a latin word reflexes which actually means reflection reflected back directed back now there are two types of action which occur in our body voluntary you know it is performed consciously it is under our control and involuntary which is performed unconsciously which is not under our control so voluntary actions like if you want to watch some tv on program some program some tv you will switch on the tv and then you'll press the remote for a particular channel you know which program comes on which channel isn't it and if you want to eat an apple you'll pick it up and you'll eat it and if you want to know the time what will you do you'll raise your arm and look at the watch on your wrist so these are all voluntary actions that is under your control okay and involuntary actions which are not under our control which occurs unknowingly are known as reflexes and uh, stimulus you know we had already discussed that in the beginning of this chapter it is any agent or an environmental change which initiates a response in the body okay and the stimuli can be of several types physical like touch prick pressure okay a chemical radiant like light if it falls on your eyes you look, look away thermal either heat or cold okay or it may also be electrical so to define a reflex action you will define it as an automatic or a quick or an immediate involuntary action in the body brought about by a stimulus some pot particle falls into your eye and what happens you will start um, you know your eyes will start producing tears so the tears will wash out the particle so glandular secretion takes place it is not under your control instantaneous withdrawal of hand when it accidentally touches a hot iron supposing you touch a hot iron you will not think you'll immediately pull back your hand so that is muscular movement and when you feel cold you shiver what happens the muscles are contracting okay so that is also not under your control and sweating when it is too hot that is glandular secretion that is also not under your control okay <clears throat> and then dilation of the eye pupil 
that is the eye pupil will become dilated it will become bigger so that you can look in the dark when it is dark more light must enter the eye okay and of course when uh, there is uh, more light what will happen to the eye pupil it will constrict so that less light will enter your eye okay next is the pushing along of the swallowed food through the food canal that is by muscular movement that is also not under your control okay and of course the non-stop beating of the heart which is also muscular movement you cannot control so all these are involuntary actions or reflexes which are initiated or started by some kind of sensory stimulation resulting in either a muscular action or a glandular secretion either to remove your hand okay to run away or some sort of like the glands will secrete maybe the tears maybe saliva and so on Okay, now moving on to the types of reflexes. There are two types of reflexes. One is natural, inborn. You don't have to learn. And one is conditioned, acquired. That is, you will learn through experience. Now, natural or inborn reflex is one in which you do not require any previous experience. You do not need to learn it. These are inborn, inherited from the parents like blinking coughing sneezing these are protective reflexes okay and salivation swallowing peristalsis these provide functional efficiency so you need not learn you are inborn that is it comes with you as soon as you are born okay now next is conditioned or acquired reflex okay so you will get these reflexes during your lifetime you will learn due to experience for example when you just smell your favorite food okay what will happen you will see that you will start salivating that is your mouth will start watering. This means that you have eaten that food and you know it tastes good. So that is why saliva will start forming in your mouth. But if you have not tasted that previously, that response will not occur. Okay, so salivation is also a natural reflex. Okay, so saliva starts flowing down when you chew or eat food that we've done in the digestive system in the part one of this book. But you know, uh, sometimes just the smell, nice smell of, you know, the favorite food comes in through the window and what will happen or when you talk about your favorite food, your mouth starts watering, isn't it? So actually what is happening? Your brain is remembering the taste of the food and it is working in an unconscious way. So such conditioned reflexes are not inborn and are also acquired reflexes. You know the taste, you know the smell. That is why you are salivating. A vegetarian person will not salivate if he or she gets the smell of, you know, chicken. But a non-vegetarian person who knows the smell and the taste of chicken will start salivating immediately. Okay, so when we talk about a conditioned reflex, which we are talking about an involuntary, spontaneous, automatic response, which is brought about by a previously learned experience. Okay, so there was a very interesting experiment done on a dog by uh, a Russian biologist whose name was Pavlov. Okay, so what he did was, you know, uh, if you ring a bell, a dog will not salivate. So what this uh, biologist did was, he took a dog and um, he gave food to the dog. Okay, he presented food and the dog salivated and then he rang a bell. Okay, again he gave food, he rang a bell. He gave food, rang a bell continuously for many days. And then one day what he did, he just rang, up, rang the bell. So just ringing the bell, what happened? The dog started salivating because his brain now took it for granted. Bell means food. So the brain was working in that manner because the stimulus, um, it did not have any, you know, um, uh, relation previously. Just ringing the bell, 
the dog did not think anything but when it was trained food and the bell food and the bell food and the bell means the dog's brain was trained in such a manner that ringing the bell actually meant food so it started salivating okay now let us talk about some common reflexes in humans natural or inborn reflexes the knee jerk in which the leg is involuntarily extended as a result of a sharp tap below the kneecap in a relaxed leg rested on the other leg while sitting when you sit down you cross your leg and if you hit at a certain point in the knee you will see that it will automatically jerk okay so that is known as a knee jerk next is quick closing of the eyelids when an object suddenly approaches the eye or when a strong beam of light is flashed across you are aware of that okay and if uh, someone pinches you if you prick your hand immediately what will happen you will withdraw your hand okay and next is peristaltic reflexes that is chime food is propelled through the small intestine by peristaltic waves when a portion of the intestine becomes distended with chime that is the food the stretching of the intestinal wall becomes a stimulus and its contraction that is pushing the food along is the response whenever there is food in the intestine the stretching becomes the stimulus and it contracts and pushes the food along which is the response okay now coughing reflex when food is swallowed in the wrong direction that is it uh, enters the windpipe you will start choking that means the food must come out so you will start coughing so that is the reflex and sneezing reflex is when anything enters your nose any particle foreign particle any irritant enters the nose what will you do to remove that you will sneeze okay now that is in born now next is conditioned or acquired reflexes most of the daily habits and acts are conditioned when you see the teacher entering the classroom if you stand up then you have experienced that before you know that the teacher has entered and you have to get up to wish her okay then you tie your shoelaces while you are talking and not knowing whether you are first putting the right lace over the left or left over the right that means you can just tie your shoelaces without even looking at it okay when you play a musical instrument okay the guitar you don't even look at it and even using the keys of the keyboard when you are working on the computer that you know which letters are where and you can easily type them okay and uh, when you give a hand signal to your right automatically when you are turning your cycle or car to the right you'll see that especially drivers do that and if something comes suddenly comes in front of vehicle the brakes are applied quickly okay so that is also a in it is a conditioned acquired reflex so differentiation between an acquired reflex and natural reflex you are going to write down this the uh, difference in your assignment for this week and you will also write down common reflexes in human natural as well as conditioned reflexes so this is your assignment for this week with this table the difference okay so natural is inborn it is directly related to the stimulus and similar in all humans it is developed by experience brought about by condition totally different from the direct initial stimulus and it differs in different individuals according to how that person has learned okay now next we move on to the nervous pathways in reflexes now a reflex action must be very quick so that it will have value so the pathway for receiving and sending information must be very short that is there is no time for the stimulus to go right up to the brain so in a simple reflex what happens is impulses are not conducted up and down the spinal cord up to the brain but they leave at the same level at which they enter so this may involve two neurons or three neurons so when it involves two neurons it is a dorsal sensory neuron which is located in the dorsal root of the spinal cord and a ventral motor neuron 
which is located at the ventral part of the gray matter of the spinal cord. When we learned about the structure, if you remember, we have discussed this, okay? And the motor neuron has its fiber in the ventral root. So the impulses from the sense receptors is received through the sensory, okay, afferent meaning carrying towards, okay, of the dorsal root of the spinal nerve. And as it reaches the motor neuron in the spinal cord, a response impulse is immediately flashed like a reflection. It is reflected back. Reflex action, if you remember, means reflected back turning back okay so it passes back through the same spinal nerve to the effector muscle or the organ to react so sometimes a third neuron called intermediate for connecting a association neuron or relay neuron is included in the reflex arc lying between the sensory fiber and the motor fiber so after the response, then the sensation is carried to the brain. So as you can see here, uh, hold on, yeah, see the receptor. This is the you know the reflex arc. Supposing you touch a hot object, so the reflex will move in through the sensory neuron goes into the spinal cord and immediately a response is created here and the response is carried to the effector or the muscle to withdraw the hand immediately. So sometimes what happens? The sensory neuron and the motor neuron, this is the motor neuron, they are directly connected to each other. But sometimes there is an association neuron in the middle which transmits the impulse from the sensory neuron to the motor neuron. So in a reflex action a reflex arc is formed which is the shortest route that can be taken by an impulse from receptor to an effector okay. So the reflex arc you can see stimulus is there which is received in the sense organ and it is carried by the sensory nerve fiber to the central nervous system, either the spinal cord or the brain. And then the spinal cord or the brain sends back a message to the muscle or the gland, okay, through the motor nerve fiber. So it goes to the muscle to contract or the gland to secrete, okay. So here you can see stimulus is received by the receptor carried by the sensory neuron to the brain or spinal cord and then from the brain or spinal cord the message is sent back to the effector by the motor neuron and then you will get the response okay. So receptor it is a group of specialized epithelial cells in contact with the terminal endings of the nerve cells which respond to stimulus and convert it into an impulse and which is carried along by a sensory neuron. You know sensory neuron, uh, it is a neuron in the spinal cord that receives the nerve impulses through its axon terminal endings which are in contact with the receptor cells. And central nervous system, you know, it is the spinal cord or the brain where the incoming sensory impulse gives another um, message to the outgoing motor impulse. So in the center there may be an association neuron between the sensory and motor neuron. Now motor neuron it carries impulse generated by the association neuron in the central nervous system it carries it to the organ the effector organ it may be a muscle or a gland. So effector it is an organ it is a muscle or a gland that responds to the motor nerve impulse that is whatever message was brought by the motor nerve from the brain or the spinal cord. Now next is a complex reflex action. It involves the neurons at different levels of the spinal cord. Supposing you are walking in a dark road and if you happen to stamp on a coiled rope, what will happen? You'll think that it is a snake and what will happen? Virtually all the skeletal muscles are involved in this reflex. So that is a complex reflex action. So this is all for today children. I've already given you your assignment. So till we meet again, stay safe. God bless you.